probably today we're talking about Al Muasa. Al Muasa is, is the one of the members of Islam and it means to stand by the side of your Muslim brother, especially in the time of hardship. When one of your brothers uh, or your sisters is going through a very hard time or a hardship in life, so at that time they need your support. That kind of support is one of the main uh, characteristics of the believers, the true believers. Remember Ibn Qayyim said that we have different types of support here. Some people support by their power, like you use your power to support your Muslim brothers and sisters in some situations. Some people support by the money, if they are in need to money. Some people support by words, in their need, they are need, need to good words and, you know, to stand by them and they feel like people care about them. So we have to be tired and say that support goes up and down according to the belief of the believer. If you're a strong believer, you give a strong support to your Muslim brothers and sisters. If you're a weak believer, your support will be very weak. So that's an indicator of your belief, you can say, how strong believer you are or how weak believer you are. So let us give some examples about that from the Quran and the Sunnah. In the Quran, we see that all of us are humans and sometimes we feel like we need that support at a certain point. Even the messengers and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they need that support. That's why you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the messengers and prophets and say, if your people disbelieve in what you say, Allah knows that you're saying the truth. Don't worry about what they say. Don't get sad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Don't be sad for their disbelief. Don't have stress because of the bad land, the kuffar, the non-Muslims against you and the Muslims. So don't worry about that because Allah Azza wa knows what's going on. Allah Azza wa knows that they don't think that you are a liar. They just do not believe the truth that you came with, which is the Quran and the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah gave these words to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that's a big support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet and Messenger so that he doesn't feel sad, he doesn't feel, you know, annoyed by what they say, if you can say. Also, we need this as believers. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in all the situations, you're going to find him there supporting the Muslims in all the situations. For example, if they need, if they are in need to money, they will come to him and he will help right away. Salman al Farisi, one of the great companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came one day to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was so sad and he was in stress. He said, Prophet of Allah, I owe a lot of money to people and I have written a contract between me and my master because he was a slave. That if I pay that much to him, he will free me. And I don't have the money to pay him that much. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, let me give you something. He just received, you know, some gifts or gains of war or whatever. So he gave him a small bowl of gold. He said, take this. He said it was like as the egg, as the size of an egg. So he gave it to him. Then Salman looked at him said, Prophet of Allah, that's not going to do anything. It's so like it. He said, the Prophet smiled and he said, just go, sell it and pay as much as you can. So he went to the market, sell it, and he paid the money, and it was enough for all the money that he owes. Uh, surprisingly, you know, he didn't expect that, but because of the blessing of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu So he gave him the support he needs. And in another situation that's even more interesting, a companion came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Prophet of Allah, I need help. Say, for what? Say, I'm getting married, and I promise my wife 200 dirhams, 200 dirhams, yeah, in Nowadays language, you're talking about like 20,000 or something like this, dollars. So the Prophet Muhammad said, if you have that much money in this valley, if this valley is full of money, and you are just, you know, taking from it as much as you can, you wouldn't promise your future wife that much money. Like, it's saying, how come you give that big, you know, dowry to her? Why do you even have money? So the Prophet was surprised. He said, that's what happened with the Prophet of Allah. He asked me for the money. I said this company. So that we can agree. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I didn't have the money. So the man stayed in the Masjid for a while. Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him and said, come. You know what? I'm sending some Sahaba to fight in the cause of Allah. You know, so go with him. And if you gain anything in the world, I'll give it to you to, to pay that money uh, for. So he went and he gave a lot of money and the Prophet gave him 
the money that he gave, I give him extra so that he pays the, the devil. So this is a support that Rasulullah is giving to the Sahaba in terms of money, when they, need, when they are in need to money. But he's giving also another support, which is like the support with the nice words and the good words, and that's not less than the other one. It's equal and sometimes more important in some situation. There was one Sahaba who used to attend the lectures of the Prophet Muhammad in the masjid, and he was absent for a couple of times. So the Prophet asked him, where is this man? When he used to come with his little son playing around him, and I told him to sit in front of me, that little son, and I keep, you know, playing with him. So they said, Prophet of Allah is very sad. Why? His son died. So, inna lillahi wa the Prophet Muhammad said, that's why he's not coming. He said, yes. He said, tell him that the Prophet wants to meet you. Bring him to me. So the man came and was sad. The Prophet said, What happened? He said, My son, Prophet Allah, the one who used to tell me, he died. So the Prophet Muhammad said, I'm going to tell you one thing. Would you rather that you will, your son will live until he becomes a young man and he die and he goes to the grave? Or would you rather that when you die, you're going to find your son is waiting for you and holding the door of Jannah to open it for you? Which one you want to say? Rasulullah, so, I would like him to open the door of Jannah and take my hand to the Jannah. So the Prophet Muhammad said, this is the case. This is what's happening. This son that will be before you is going to wait for you and open the door of Jannah for you. So the man became happy. He accepted Qadha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So words like these are very, very important words that we give to our brothers. Also, Jan ibn Abdullah, his father died in the war as Shaheed, murderer in Islam. So when his father died, he was sad because he lost his father. He knew that he's going to get a big reward and everything, but he was sad. So the Prophet Muhammad said to him, Jabir, why is he you sad? He said, Prophet Allah, I lost my father. So he said, Jabir, do you know what happened to your father? He said, shall I tell you about the good news now? He said, yes, Prophet Allah, tell me. He said, you know, on the day of judgment, Everyone will look to Allah behind the curtain of light. Allah will achieve the light between us and Allah and will look to us one to one. But the only one that Allah is going to talk to him straight without the shield is your father. And Allah talked to him and said to him, Make any wish and I will give it to you. Right now, Allah talked to your father and said, Make any wish, I'll give it to you. So he said, Oh Allah, I wish to give go back to the dunya and find for your cause until I die Shahid again, one more time. Because you see the big reward for the Shahid. So Allah said, that wish is not going to be true. You cannot get this wish. Because I told every Muslim and I told the people, and that the word of Allah is not going to be changeable. My word says that nobody is going to get back to the dunya. Okay? According to the Quran, Allah says that when they die, there was a barrier between the dunya and the believer life. So he said, that wish you cannot get. He said, oh Allah, at least tell the people how happy I am and the great reward that I got as a shaheed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the ayah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتْلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَانُ مَا إِنْدَ رَبِّهِ يُرَزَقُونَ Don't think that the people who died in the cause of Allah Azza are dead. No, they are alive and they are taking provision from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They are being provided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the ayah came and gave good news that the shahada, the murderers, and those who died in the cause of Allah are actually alive, even though they died. But their souls, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the souls of the shahada are in Jannah. They wonder if they are going to go anywhere, but just the soul, without the body yet. Not the body yet, because this is going to be until after the day of what of judgment. So they go to Jannah anywhere they want. So words like this will support the Sahaba, will give them a strong will, will make them happy. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he find a man from the Sahaba, his name is Julaibi. This man is trying to get married, but nobody will give him a marriage. You know, nobody accepts to give him, you know, his daughter or his sister in marriage. Why? Because a man doesn't have a lot of money. He's poor. And the man is not a handsome, okay? So every time he goes to someone, he says, no. So he came to the Prophet Muhammad and said, you know that? So the Prophet said, do more. So the Prophet went to a family from the people of Madinah. He said, 
Al Musi wa Dosa al Nafish. So the same problem of Allah is that from all of us to get our Dosa al Nafish to you, and not from me. It's all the way in. So they kind of get incitated that the father and mother said, Let me. So they said, Let us talk to her. They talk to her and said, As long as the father is the one who's coming, I'm going to get married to him. So the prophet helped him to get married. That's how it is. He will help and support in every situation, even when his uh, cousin, Jahar and Abu Talib, is one of the battles, the battle of Mota, the Prophet Muhammad came to his family after the good and the news of his death, and they were crying and sad and everything. So he said to them, You know, bring the children from me, the children of his cousin Jahar and Abu Talib. So he came, he was young. So the Prophet Muhammad put his hand over the head. And started to make dua to them that Allah bless them and Allah support them and Allah make them good children, you know. And then he started to talk to them nice to make them feel happy. He said, That kid of Jaha looks like our father, his grandfather. And that kid looks like me, the way I look is very similar to me in my look and the way I look and also in my manners. That was Abdullah ibn Jaha. Yeah. So Abdullah ibn Jaha became happy. He was just a kid, but he's happy. And his mother also said in here, she became happy. Then the mother started to say to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Allah, the kids are religion, it's religion, nobody can, it's going to support the family, work all this and that. So the Prophet looked at her and said, you complaining about poverty, and I am here. I am their guardian in the dunya and the akhirah. I will take care of them in the dunya and the akhirah. I'm going to ask their Muslims. So she became quiet and happy that the Prophet is not going to live in like that. So when we look at that support from the Prophet Muhammad to his Sahaba all the time, even after the death, that support will continue. There was a woman or a man, the narration is, is different, you know. Some narration said it was a man, some narration said it was a woman who was cleaning the masjid. Anything you find in the cleaning the whole time. Well, it did for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody help or, or any service in the masjid, that's a great problem from Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad was traveling somewhere, and when he came back, he was missing this man. So where is this man? Or where is this woman? So they said, Prophet of Allah, he died, and we prayed janazah on him, and we buried him. And we didn't tell you about that when you came back from your travel, because we didn't want to bother you. So the Prophet Muhammad said, No, you should have told me. They thought that, well, you probably didn't even remember this man. Well, that man that nobody cares about him. No. The Prophet said, show me his grave. Where is the grave of this man? He took him to this the grave. So the Prophet Muhammad started to make dua to him. And he used to visit the grave from time to time to make dua to him. That is the love and the support we are looking for and we are asking for for our Muslim brothers and sisters. Especially in the, the tough time that we live in our days. Some people get sick and they cannot work. You need to support them. Ask about them. Give them good words. Uh, you need to help them with little money or whatever you can, whether they're family members, neighbors, friends, you know, and the, the most important thing, the family members. The one from Abu Lamb and so the husband of Abu so was poor. And she used to make some stuff and sell it in. Okay? So she's supposed to save the money for herself because of the wife work or get some money that she keeps to herself unless she volunteers to help. So she went to the Prophet Muhammad and said, Oh, well, my husband's poor. And I held him with my money a lot, I gave him the money that he had. What's my reward? He said, you will get double reward. One reward, because you are taking care of Rahim, the ties of relationship of your family. And the second reward, the reward of Sunnah of Charity. So we take two rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we need in this time. The brother helps the brother, the wife helps the husband, the husband helps the family members and the neighbors. We need to help each other and support each other as the Prophet and the Sahaba used to do. Because this is our big example here from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam